It's been a year and a half since we last had this guy on Philly Press Box Radio with us, a key member of the 1993 Phillies starting rotation, who looks like he could still pitch today, frankly. It's our old pal, Tommy Green. Hey, Tommy, how are you? How are you doing, Jim? Good to be with you, man. Oh, man, I'm good. Uh, we will talk at length about the 1993 Phillies and Alumni Day and all that stuff in a couple of minutes, but let's start with your take on the 2023 Phillies. They've certainly been inconsistent, but that was the case last year, too, and they ended up going to the World Series, so who knows? What are your concerns as we head into the final 48 or 50 games of the season? Well, I mean, uh, obviously, he's getting the, getting the guys clicking on the same page here at the end. You know, Hopefully, it's trending sort of towards the right direction uh, with Turner getting hot a little bit and, and, and keep, and we need him to get going a little bit. And, 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 and he showed that of late and the fans have been supporting him. Uh, one of the other concerns to me is the back end of the bullpen, not just, not just Kimbrell. Kimbrell's been doing a great job, but it's getting Alvarado back if it's possible uh, to, sol- the, to help solid up that bullpen a little bit. And, and overall, they've done a great job. But the, those are the type of concerns you, as you get to, towards the end is having everybody clicking on all, all cylinders. It, you know, and it comes down to pitching uh, as hopefully the guys can be consistent and, and, uh, and give us a chance to stay in every ball game, give us a chance to win. And that's all you can ask. It does look like Bryce Harper's power is coming back a little bit, which would be a, a big help also. Yeah. Well, I mean, anytime you, you're looking at home runs, that's the big part of the game now that people love to see is the home runs. But I'll tell you what, I think overall what's happened with Bryce and the way he's going about his business now, he's bought into a lot of uh, things and driving the baseball the other way and doing things that's going to end up probably helping him you know, in the long run. It just takes the progression of him working, doing his daily stuff, what he and what he needs, knowing when to rest, but knowing, you know, to keep going and to get stronger. Uh, that elbow and that and that and that right side of his body is going to get stronger, and and that's what we needed needed for it to happen. How about what the Phillies are getting offensively from the younger guys, Alec Bohm and Bryson Stott? Well, I tell you what, they wouldn't be where they're at without those guys in the daycare because I tell you what, they've done an exceptional job all year long. And uh, I tell you what, there's really no better hitter on their team in, in their approach than there is it, and is not afraid with two strikes than Alec Baum and, 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 and stop. You know, it's a pleasure to see the guys that come through the organization and stuff doing some positive things at the, and good things at the, at the big league level. And it's good for the Philly scouting department. And it, it, just, it puts a good mark, check mark in the box for all the hard work they've done to try to identify these guys. And the guys are – are doing well and making progress each year that they play. It's going to be an interesting final seven weeks of the season for sure. All right, alumni weekend at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Festivities all weekend long, including a great fundraiser event in connection with the Sunday game. We'll talk about that in a minute. But regarding the 1993 season, Tommy, how did you guys pull that off, going from 70 wins and last place in the NL East in 1992 to 97 wins and the pennant in 93? Well, I tell you what, a lot of the core that unit was already there. I think there were some times where we were just we needed a couple extra pieces, but the overall health uh, of the team wasn't uh, wasn't good, you know. But then the '93 came, it came, and we had the, that same group plus a couple of additions that they brought in with Eisenreich and you know Milt Thompson and Incabilia, and you know they had got DJ the year before. And I mean, it's a thing about being healthy plus some of the guys playing up there to, to their ability. Sort of like what's happening with Stott and uh, Alec Baum. They're playing up to, to, to their ability. We all got identified at, you know, at a young age coming through the organization or, or other organizations that we were drafted by as being a, a possibly uh, impact player in the big leagues. And then it's all about going and doing it. You know, it's, I mean, you can write it down on paper all you want, but it's the, it's the, it's the progression and staying healthy, and I think that was the uh, the huge thing is the staying healthy part. For the most part, we never had – we didn't have the significant injury that really cost us in our lineup for us, you know, one of our big guys going out. I mean, you don't see it that often these days, but, you know, we had three platoons that played that year, you know, at second base, you know, and then the outfield tw- – two, two outfield positions, you know. So it's uh, – you had a lot of quality guys – you know, getting a chance to play and it stayed hot and everybody contributed, you know, and for the most part, pitchers stayed 
healthy. I was the only one. I didn't have any arm injuries, but, you know, I pulled a groin and after the All-Star break, you know, two starts after the All-Star break, it cost, it cost me almost a month, you know, to get back, you know, to, to where I could really go uh, good, you know. And, you know, then I got on the run at the end. And, uh, you know, people got – it comes down to getting healthy at the right time. We got healthy at the right time again and pushed and, and, and finished up solid in the year. It gave us a chance to get the – you know, got in. Well, obviously, we we got into the playoffs, but it gave us a chance to match up against the Braves decently. And you know, everybody on paper thought the Braves were going to kill us, but they didn't want nothing to do with us. You had as many wins in 1993, despite that groin injury, as Man. Kurt Schilling did—16 wins. And yeah. uh, you had a lower ERA than Kurt Schilling, so not too shabby, Tommy. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, it was, I tell you what, all of us. You know, people ask me what was the most important thing about that year. I say what I mean. People talk about uh, going to the World Series and stuff like that. That's great. That's gravy. It was the getting in. It was the winning. The year's worth of work. You know that clinching night in Pittsburgh was. That was probably the most fulfilling night. You know because it, you had to get in. You had to win to get in. Yeah. And uh, and it, what meant, I mean, it still means a lot. You know now they have a you know, the playoff uh, the playoffs the way they got them in the and the, the teams, the wild card teams and stuff get in. And if you look back at it, that was the last year before the wild card come in because 94 was the strike year. 95 was the first year of the wild card. And, you know, I take, you know, we take a little bit of pride in that, I think, because, you know, it took, you had to win to get in. And, you know, I mean, now you got other ways to do. The game has changed and it's good for the city and it's good. And it's, and it's good for the guys, you know, it gives them something to fight for and play for and, you know, and because uh, you got a team in Atlanta that's kind of, you know, you're kind of boat race this right as of right now to get out such a big lead. But, you know, say teams can go bad a little bit and lose some and teams can get hot and make it a little bit interesting, you know, at the end of the year. It's just hope we get on that good run and, and do things. Well, when we had you on last year, Tommy, early last year, I showed the video of the conclusion of your 1991 no-hitter, which was pretty amazing. But yeah. today, since we're talking about the 93 fills, let's go with this highlight from, well, of you in game six that you discussed, the NLCS game against the Braves. You right here going against a pretty famous Atlanta star. Here you go. Deion Sanders batting for the pitcher, Merker. Two outs in the seventh. Back-to-back -back strikeouts in the inning for Tommy Green. That had to feel pretty good, Tommy. That was one of the better breaking balls I ever thrown, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it did exactly what I wanted it to do and where I wanted it. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to make you revisit what happened in game two. Your game two start didn't go so well, but hey, that's, that's part that's part of baseball. So yeah. I learned a, you learn a lesson, you know, a little bit to, how to take care of yourself. I was at game two. I was working on like I think I might have been pitching on the 10th day. I had like yeah. I, I mean, I was too strong. I couldn't throw a strike. I couldn't. I was down in the count early, falling behind guys. And that and that's what happens when you do that. You know, so. The next day, next time I pitched on my regular rest, was down in the zone. Didn't feel quite as strong, you know. But, I mean, so, I mean, it, it kind of works out to where, you know, you don't need to feel like you throw a 1,000, 100 miles an hour. you got to make pitches and that's, and stay ahead and counts and dictate when less than have to come to those guys because those guys, when you come to them, they can hurt you. So. Well, not only did you send Deion Sanders back to the NFL, you outpitched that Greg Maddox to send the Phils to the World Series. So, Certainly a great memory right there. Hey, I've heard through the grapevine that four-fifths of the 1993 starting rotation will be at the ballpark this weekend. And you, Kurt Schilling, Danny Jackson, and Ben Rivera, that's going to be a, a fun time, I'm thinking. Well, yeah. I mean, it would be great to see Terry. I hadn't seen Terry Mahalo in so long. But I tell you what, to have, you know, that many, uh, that, that group of guys, four out of the five there, I mean, you can't beat it because, you know, you get a chance to see Kurt and Ben. I don't get a chance to see them that often. I tend to see DJ a few times a year, yeah. which is also great that the Phillies keep us involved in doing things, you know, down in fantasy camp and and, and that stuff because we thoroughly enjoy it. And uh, you know, and me and Danny are involved with a lot of other stuff that people we know around the area, you know, that uh, you know he comes back for. So alumni weekend and and, and and fantasy camp and stuff like that to get a chance to see these guys is unbelievable. 
You mentioned Terry Mulholland. This is the last picture I could find him. 2012, he did an <laughs> autograph signing. And as far as I know, he's still living off the grid somewhere out west. Is that what you know? Well, as far as I know, and that's probably the last time I seen him. And he had his back to me when I come into that that signing. Yeah. Uh, I think it was down in King of Prussia. And, yeah. And the guy told me, I said, I, uh, I saw that Terry Mahalo supposed to be here. I said, you know when he's going to be here? He said, yeah, he's right over there. But he had his back to me. And <laughs> I've never seen Terry with long hair or gray hair. And, 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 and okay, but, he, but he spoke and, and he was, he wasn't facing me. He spoke, but I knew it was him. As soon as, soon as he spoke, that voice he's got is, uh, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, he's one of those deep bass, you know, voices. And I mean, I said, that's Terry. Yeah, so yep. I wish we could see him. I know he's been. Uh, I think they said uh, you, you said off the grid. That's pretty much where he lives at in Arizona. I think off the yep. grid somewhere. Yep. But uh, hopefully one day we'll get a chance to see him. All right. So Alumni Day Sunday will honor both the 1993 and 83 pennant winning Phillies teams. And as most fans know, Tug McGraw, John Vukovic, and your teammates Darren Dalton and David West all died from brain cancer, unfortunately. Yeah. And sad as that is, the good news is that the Tug McGraw and Darren Dalton Foundations are teaming up now to raise money this Sunday. Proceeds from some of the game tickets and from a special merchandise table going to those two great charities. I know how much charity work you do, Tommy, for the Dalton Foundation, so that's great. Well, I'll tell you what, you can't believe, you know, I always, you know, I think about, you know, my dear teammates and my dear friend Darren. Uh, I wouldn't be probably where I'm at without him. You know, he was a big part of my life, especially after uh, after baseball. You know, uh, we got tighter after baseball. He taught me so much about you know how to how to be a baseball player the right way. Challenged me to be better, and you know maybe you know, they have to grow up to, as a baseball player as a young man. And I learned so much from him. Uh, and to be able to uh, pay for his uh, uh, foundation that he and Amanda started, and and and, and try to make a difference in the lives of other people, other family members, and other families that are going through this horrible disease, you know, to make their day better and to bring a smile to their face and be able to, to deal with things a little more, a little better, and a little more comfortably. If we can help do that and raise money to be able to, to help those people, that's what, that's what we're, I know I'm all about. And that's what the foundation is about. So we're, we're working hard to do different things. We've got different functions coming up. Uh, Please, please check the Darren Dalton Foundation website and, uh, you know, see when this stuff's going on. And please be a part uh, to help make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah, there's a night at the Reading Phillies in late August, a fall classic event out in Maryland in September, and a celebrity bartending night at Live Casino in early October. All the details, as you said, at DarrenDaltonFoundation.org. Tommy, this was a blast. My best to your lovely wife, Wendy. I hope to see you at the ballpark this Sunday. Thanks, man. Uh, you got it, man. Thanks for having me.